Hello again everyone, I'm Julie for Cozy Corner Quilts and this tutorial is going to teach us how to quilt our quilt. So you've gone ahead, you've made a beautiful quilt top and now you're thinking, great, now what? How do I finish this quilt so I can use it or gift it to somebody? This tutorial is for you. It's going to be quite an extensive tutorial because I want to start right at the beginning and work our way through to the end for um, the beginners that are just starting out in quilting. So because I'm breaking this up into sections, you can fast forward and rewind to the parts that you need or if you need to rewatch something, that's the, the idea of breaking it down into the sections. So the first section we're going to talk about is the equipment we need to quilt our quilt. So that's um, our sewing machine, the different types of feet we need, um, all the different types of equipment that you need um, to quilt your quilt. The next section I'm going to talk about the materials we need. So that's about backing fabrics and batting. Um, there's different types of batting and there's lots out there and it can be a little confusing. So I'm going to um, talk about the ones that I use and why I use them. The next section we're going to um, get our quilt ready to quilt. So that's about basting and how we sandwich it all together to get it ready um, for quilting. The next section is setting up our machine, um, putting on the feet, working all that out and then actually quilting the quilt. I'm going to show you different types of um, uh, different types of stitches that I use um, to quilt our quilt and then we're going to quilt it. Um, then the next section will be about um, finishing off our quilt. So uh, trimming it, getting it ready for the binding. Then how do we make our binding? How do we um, create the binding to put onto the quilt? Um, putting the binding on and then um, finishing the quilt off. So lots to cover. Um, but I think it's important that we go from um, step by step from beginning to end um, just so the beginners can follow along and um, that's what we're going to do. So lots to cover, let's get started. So here we are, first section, we're going to talk about the equipment we need um, to create, the, to quilt your quilt. So. Um, there's a few things that you need. Obviously, you're going to need uh, a sewing machine. Now, um, for those of you who asked, I use a Janome machine, always have. Um, they're a great machine. But what I'm going to teach you today, you can use on any domestic machine. If your machine can sew a straight stitch, you can quilt a quilt. So um, all you need is your um, domestic sewing machine. And then, of course, you'll need um, all the bits and pieces. So you know, um, scissors and uh, cotton and thread and all that sort of thing. So the other thing that we need in, um, is there's two types of feet you use when you're quilting. The first one is a walking foot. Um, this is obviously for the Janome machine. And the other one is um, called a quilting foot, a stippling foot, a darning foot. It's called a free motion quilting foot. Um, and it's also for, this is obviously for the Janome machine, but you can get these online um, for your machine. So you just go to your machine's website and you'll be able to um, purchase them there. The other thing you'll need um, is lots and lots of safety pins. Now I use these ones, these are Matilda's own brand. Um, they've got a bit of a curve in them, so it just makes them easier to go in and out of your quilt. Um, it is sort of a little bit of a curve. These size are 38 millimeter. Um, I also use a 32 millimeter, so um, it's, they're the ones that I use. Um, you'll need a dessert spoon. Um, explanation later, but you'll need a dessert spoon. Um, you'll need a rotary cutter and, and your um, rulers and that sort of thing, which you should already have, and obviously your cutting mat. Um, that it really is about it. The only other thing that I really like to use are quilting gloves. Now these are great. These um, actually have little, um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's little um, dots on them and they're sticky. So when you're actually wearing these when you're quilting, um, it actually grips the quilt. So it gives you a bit more control, especially if you're doing free motion quilting. Um, but these are really great. Again, um, I use a Matilda's own brand, um, Snug Fit, great price, easy to use. So as far as equipment goes, that's it. That's um, really all the equipment that you will need um, to quilt your quilt. 
a lot of this you're already going to have so um, there's not a lot you need to gather and get together so um, that's that for this section so the next section we're going to talk about the batting and the backing fabrics okay so let's go on to the next section we've talked about um, the equipment we need to quilt our quilt now we need to talk about the materials that we need um, to finish off our quilt so um, I'm going to talk about batting first so there's three types of batting that I use they're all Matilda's own brand um, I find it's Australian it's fantastic um, I've used lots of batting over the years and this is by far my much preferred batting now the first one I use is 100% cotton it's a little bit lighter than um, the wool blend it's um, thinner uh, it's really great for um, a, like a lap quilt, for a light lap quilt, um, for a bed runner at the bottom of your bed, um, for a table topper or a wall hanging even. It's just a little bit thinner. So it's a great um, batting and it's 100% cotton. So um, it's a lovely batting. The one that I probably use most of the time would have to be the 60-40 blend. So it's a 60% wool, 40% cotton. It's great for a bed quilt, kids quilts, cots quilts, it's great. Um, it washes really well. Um, I've never had an issue with it um, going through the machine. So um, it's a really good batting. The other one that I've used occasionally is a bamboo batting. It hasn't been on the market as long as the other two, um, but it's also a, a, lovely, um, a lovely batting and some people really like the bamboo idea of using bamboo so that's also available now batting normally comes in 2.4 meters wide uh, on a big roll so if you're making um, a queen size quilt it's, it's plenty wide enough you just need to buy enough length um, so if, for instance our um, twisted jelly roll quilt that um, some of you have already made it's definitely wide enough um, I think the finished quilt size of that is about 70 inches but you know, check that before you go and buy your batting um, so you probably get away with a one and a half meters of um, batting now the the same thing is for the backing fabric so you can actually buy backing fabric that's 108 inches wide um, and there's quite a few on the market you can um, I do have a few on my website I tend to stay neutral colors on the back of my quilts only because I think we put so much effort and time into the top of our quilt um, I don't really want to take it away from from using a, a crazy backing but it's purely preference if you want to do that you go right ahead okay so I think that covers our um, our bashing and our backing fabric the only other thing I want to say about backing fabric is that if you can't find a backing fabric that's 108 inches wide that you don't that you that you like the other alternative is you can just buy normal cotton 100% cotton fabric um, and buy two lengths and then join them together so it's wide enough to fit the back of your quilt so that's another option and I've done that before so it's definitely an option so um, that's all the materials we need um, the only other thing would have to be the binding um, fabric but normally if you're buying a kit it normally comes with the binding fabric um, now most of the time the binding fabric is coordinates with your quilt as with the twisted jelly roll um, I've got the pink around the edges um, which goes with the cornerstones in the quilt so um, you also need to think about your binding um, but that's about it so the next step of course is we're going to get our quilt ready um, for quilting so now we are going to um, start basting our quilt so this is the fun bit so but the first thing you need to do of course is to um, get your backing fabric and your batting and your quilt top organized and ready now you really need to um, give your backing fabric and your quilt top a really good iron we don't want any creases in it um, i actually starch mine um, i use a product called ellen's best press it's fantastic but 
Um, you can use any sort of starch um, that you have. So for filming purposes, I've just got a small quilt um, that I'll probably give to my granddaughter for her um, baby's pram. But um, the first thing we're going to do is um, lay out our backing fabric. Okay, so when you lay out your backing fabric, lay it out on a nice flat area. So if you've got a, a dining table or something like that, you, you need a, a fairly big area to lay it out flat. So you lay out your backing fabric with the right side down. So the wrong side is facing you, okay? Then on top of that, you're going to lay your batting. Now there's two sides to batting. And the first side, the top side, is a little bit more, um, you can see it, it's a little bit rougher. It's got like a, almost like a pilling on the top and then the bottom the, the underneath of that is is a lot smoother so hopefully you can see that in the camera um, you want to have the rougher side facing up okay so that's where our needles are going to go when we're quilting it so make sure it's all flat and laid out completely and then you just add your um, your, your quilt top now I mentioned earlier that you need to have at least three inches, I reckon two or three inches around the edges of your quilt that the batting and the backing is showing, okay? So this just um, allows us to see that the entire quilt top is covered because there is nothing worse than getting to the end of um, quilting your quilt and realizing that the backing fabric is too small it's too hard to fix so make sure um, again preparation that um, you've got that sorted out like that okay so this the next step is where our pins come in so when we are pinning our quilt this is how we're going to um, baste it all together so you start from the middle and you work your way out so you just grab your pins and you just place them somewhere in the middle and then we're gonna work our way out. Now I like to put my pins every three or four inches just to make sure there's enough in there. Now you do a section at a time. So just do one section, starting in the middle and working your way out. And then when you've done a section, this is where um, our dessert spoon comes in. So I'm just gonna put a couple more pins in just to show you. And then um, when you've done a section, grab your dessert spoon and this, just flip it under. I hope you can see this. You just flip it under and do up your pin. Saves a lot of sore fingers. And that's all there is to basting a quilt. Now make sure that when you've basted it all that you also do the borders, okay? So make sure that it's all secure and, um, and down. And once you've done that, um, then we can start actually quilting the quilt. So um, go ahead and do that and then come back and we'll actually set up our machine and start quilting. Okay, so now that you have your quilt basted, um, we're now gonna start quilting it. Now um, we're gonna start with um, the first quilting stitch which is called stitch in the ditch it's the easiest um, quilting that we can do um, all you have to do is just sew down the seams of your quilt so um, for this purpose um, you'll see when I start quilting I'm using a black thread um, that's so that you can see what I'm doing you need to use a neutral thread so something that's going to um, blend in with your quilt I use a lot of greys, um, light grey, medium grey and dark grey because it seems to go with all sorts of fabrics. So you could try that. If you've got a, um, a light coloured quilt, use light colours, dark, use darker. So um, that's the threads. Now I've gone ahead and I've put in my um, walking foot in my machine and I've set my stitch length to 2.7. 
So when I turn on my machine, it automatically sets at 2.4. So I've just increased it a little bit. Uh, it's good to have just a little bit. of. You don't want a tiny stitch when you're quilting. So that's it. That's the setup. So um, make sure that you have lots of bobbins ready to go um, and that you've got lots of thread and, and what have you. So where we're going to start is in the middle of the quilt yet again. So you just start, find the, it, it, generally in the middle, um, and you just start at the top of your quilt. Now all you need to do is lower your um, needle and bring it back up again. The reason we're doing that is we want to um, bring our bobbin thread to the top of the quilt. And the reason we do that is so that um, you don't get, it's caught here, just so it doesn't get caught in the back of your quilt. And that's, so always when you're starting a line or, um, or any sort of quilting, make sure you bring your bobbin thread up. Okay, so then lower your needle and just start by doing some little stitches and then go ahead and sew down the seam. When you're starting, just take it nice and slow. And just try and stay inside the seam. Now you're going to see this because I'm using the black thread as I said, but if you're using a neutral thread, you're not going to see it. So if you go off a little bit, no big deal. So that's all there is to stitching in the ditch. Now if you come across some pins that are in the way, make sure you move them out of the way so that you don't run over them. And that's all there is to it, is just stitching in the ditch all the way down to the end of your seam. Just finish this line. Now when you get to the end, um, you can lock the stitch. I have a locking stitch on my machine. And then you just um, take it out of the machine. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So um, you can see here, hopefully, in the camera, so you can see I've gone off a little bit, not a big deal. If you're using a neutral thread, you're not going to see it. So what you can do for stitching in the ditch is just stitch each of your seams um, and then turn it around and go the other way. So then you can go vertically on your quilt. Now that's one option. Another option that you've got also is um, to do a diagonal line. So if you feel confident enough to be able to follow um, the corners on your blocks, you can also do a vertical line. So I'll just quickly show you what I mean by that. So again, we put our quilt in our machine. We're just going to um, pull the bobbin thread up to the top of your quilt. Lower it down, a couple of locking stitches. And then you just eyeball it. So if you can, I'm as you can see, I'm taking out some pins so I don't run over the pins. And you just eyeball it. So we're just going to um, just head towards the next corner just like that and then again I'm going to remove the pins as I go I 
and head for the next corner. Really simple to do. Take out the pins as we go. And then that'll take us back to the start. And there you go. So that's your diagonal, um, your diagonal stitch. So I'm just locking that off now. take that out and then as you can see there it's just a diagonal line so that adds just another dimension to your quilt so um, they're the two stitches that um, I use uh, when I'm stitching in the ditch um, the next one I'm going to show you is the free motion which is my favorite um, and then we'll so I'll change the foot over to um, the quilting foot or the free motion foot darning foot whatever yours is called um, I'll switch that over and um, then I'll give you an idea of how um, we do some stippling. Okay, so now I've set up my machine um, ready to go and I've actually added um, the uh, stippling foot. The other thing you need to do with your machine is lower your feed dogs um, because we don't want it... Um, the machine to grasp our quilt we want to have free motion hence the name um, and you need to set your uh, stitch length to zero okay so that's the only additions you need to do so it's the same as you would be doing for your um, the other quilting we did the stitch in the ditch we're going to bring the um, bobbin thread up to the top of the quilt uh, and you can probably notice I'm wearing um, quilting gloves. Um, again, they're sticky. I might be able to show you under this camera actually. So they've got lots of dots on them. So they're really sticky and hold the quilt when you're quilting. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, so this stitch that I'm going to show you is called stippling. Um, it's a really basic stitch for free motion. It's not hard. It, it just takes practice. And if you think of it as like you're doodling on a piece of paper, that's how I think about it. Um, the only rule that we have is that when you are doing the stitch that you don't cross over your already done stitches. So I'll show you what I mean when I start doing this. So I'm just starting in the middle of the quilt. I'm just going to bring my um, bobbin thread up to the top. Now the machine's not going to grasp your quilt, okay? So you have total control over your quilt, okay? So when you start, just do a couple of stitches just to give it a bit of a lock. And then you guide the quilt. Okay, I'm going to start with the needle down. So try not to jerk, just go slowly. Um, and it just, honestly, it just takes practice. But it's such a, um, a great stitch to learn because it's so versatile. So it's just a matter of filling in the space. And just, it's kind of like, as I said before, it's just like doodling or think of it as like um, jigsaw, piece, jigsaw pieces. And then you just try and keep your stitch length all the same and keep your... Um, speed the same as well and just relax remember to breathe um, and just relax as you're doing it I'm just going to speed my stitch up a little bit I find it's easier if you go a little bit faster so you're just filling in a space Another great way to learn how to do this is also grab, while you're sitting in front of the TV, grab um, a notepad and a pencil and just doodle. Um, it's how you learn a muscle memory and uh, that's all this is. So 
that's all there is to stippling. Super easy. So if you want to give that a try, um, I did uh, stipple all over the uh, Twisted Jelly Roll quilt. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So um, I'll just take this out of the machine, put it under the camera so you can have a look and see what it looks like. So that's all there is to it. Super simple. Um, as I said, takes practice, um, but go ahead, give it a try and uh, see what you think. So that's it for the quilting section um, of our tutorial. Uh, next step, we're going to go on to um, do the binding. So now you've finished quilting your quilt, you need to trim it off. So this is really easy, just grab your um, cutting mat and your ruler and rotary cutter and all we're going to do is um, put it on the board, then line it up with the edge of your quilt and trim it off. So you'll have to do this in little sections like this and then just move it along your board and keep trimming. So we need to trim all four sides, just like this, and this stuff a little bit. That's what happens when I don't wear my glasses. Okay, then you go into the next side, and just keep trimming this off until all your sides are trimmed. Doing a bit of a rough job here, but you'll get the idea of it. Just trim three, one more. And then that's done. So that's all there is to it, is just um, trimming off your quilt. And now we're ready for the binding. So now you've finished quilting your quilt, the next step is to um, put the binding on. So once you've trimmed it all, we're then going to um, work out how much binding we need. So to do that, you measure your quilt. So you measure the two sides, the top and the bottom, add those together, and then add about another 10 inches. We're gonna need a bit extra um, to uh, use it as an overlap when we're sewing our binding on. So to cut your binding strips, I cut them at two and a half inches wide. Um, when you do that, because we, we, when we sew the binding strips together, we're gonna to fold them in half. Um, that just gives us a little bit extra when it's sewn on to um, pull over to the back and slip stitch in place. So two and a half inches is a, is a good width of your binding strips. So we need to join our binding strips together to make them long enough um, to sew onto our quilt. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So once you've um, cut all your strips, you just all you need to do is lay your strip out on the table. Sorry, I'm all caught up here. So you just lay one down horizontally like this and then you take another strip and you add it to the top of that and you put it into a cross so just like this so there's a little bit here a little bit at the top and then we're going to sew um, a seam or a stitch from one corner to the next so that's all you're going to do is sew from this corner to this corner so i'm just going to take this over to the machine Pop it in the machine. You can pin this if you like, if you find that easier. Now mine's moved. So a little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom. And then we're just gonna sew that from corner to corner. Just like this. So 
as I said, you can pin it if you like, or just eyeball it. And then once you've done that, you'll have, it'll look like this, okay? It'll look like that. And then the next step is to just cut this off. So we're just gonna cut across here, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam. So just cut that off with some scissors, just like that. And as you can see, when we fold this over, just got a nice seam here. So that's all there is to that. So just go ahead, sew all your um, binding strips together. And then once you've done that, take it to the iron and then just iron this in half like that. So wrong sides together, okay? So then we've got a strip like that, all right? So go ahead and do that. Then come back and um, I'll show you how to attach the binding to the quilt. So now that you've made your binding strips and you should, they should look like this. So one big long strip, all um, ironed in half with uh, wrong sides together. So now we need to attach this to our quilt. Now, what we're going to do is start, I normally start on the bottom of my quilt, but you can start wherever you like. You need to leave a bit of an overhang, so a little bit of a, a tail, okay? And then just start wherever you feel like it. Now, there's no need to pin this. You can just put it through the machine. So you just, um, just place your um, binding strip with raw edges together, okay? And take it over, I'm going to take this over to the machine and sew this on. So we've got a little bit of our tail and then we're just going to sew this. Now it doesn't need to be an exact quarter of an inch, but try and keep it about a quarter of an inch just so that we've got enough room to fold it over. So you don't want a really big seam. So I'll just get myself organized here. Okay, so just start sewing. And you're just going to sew this down like this, keeping the edges together. And just sew, sew that down like this. And just when we get to the corner, I just need to show you what to do. And it's the same for every corner. We're just going to so right down to the end. And when you get close to the end of your quilt, you need to stop at about a quarter of an inch before the end, okay? With your needle, needle down. And then you're just going to turn your quilt and we're just going to sew off in a diagonal, right off the edge. Sorry, my machine decided to do a locking stitch. Um, and then just sew off the edge like this. And I'll show you under the camera so you can see what I mean. So you can see here, I've just sewn off the edge. Okay, now the reason we do this is so that we get a really lovely corner. So. The next step after you've sewn off your edge is you're going to flip it up like that so you've got a right angle and then you're going to flip it back down. Okay, and then hold it in place. Take it back over to your machine. And then sew, keep going. So then just sew down the edge. Keeping the edges together and then just sew that down the edge. Now I'll just sew down to the next corner and show you that again just so you can see how this works. edges together, all the way down, and then when we get to the end, 
you want to stop about a quarter of an inch with your needle down and then just sew off on the diagonal. And that's it. And I'll show you again under the camera so you can see. So we've just sewn off in a diagonal. So then you take the binding, you pull it up so you've got a bit of a right angle, pull it back down and then continue sewing. So then just keep continue sewing down that edge and then do that for the other corner and then um, stop and then I will show you the next bit. Okay, so now that you have put um, your binding on and you've got your little overlap left, now we need to finish it off. So you should have your little bit of, I'll try to do this on the camera, so you should have your little bit of your, that we've started with, and then you're gonna have the leftover um, binding fabric here. So the way we do this is um, we're going to measure the overlap two and a half inches. Now, this overlap that I'm talking about needs to be the same width as what you cut your binding strips. So if you have decided to cut your binding strips at three inch or two inch, that's how much the overlap needs to be, okay? But in this case, we cut ours at two and a half inch, so our overlap is gonna be two and a half inch. Now make sure you measure this before you cut it, because once you've cut it, you can't fix it. So what I mean by the overlap is so this when this is sewn on this is going to come to here so the overlap will start from where the binding strip will finish and then we're going to measure two and a half inches in so one two and a half and you can see that's the overlap there so then we're just going to snip that off very carefully And that's all there is to it. So once you've done that, we, we now need to um, sew the rest of the binding strip on. So you're gonna do it exactly the same way as you when we joined the binding strips together in the cross. So I'll show you that now. So you're gonna take your little bit of leftover strip. Now this can be a little bit fiddly, so just take your time. So you lay it down like this and then you take your overlap and you put that on top so you're doing exactly the same as what you did when we sewed the binding strips together in the first place okay and then you're going to sew from corner from this corner to this corner and I'll show you what I mean under the machine I'm just go and pop it under the machine now Okay, so once you get it over to the machine, just gonna sew from corner to corner. Let me fix this a little bit. It's a bit hard. Got it. Okay. Sewing. From corner to corner. This. And then you can see once that's done. And we're going to trim this off like we did um, when we were sewing the binding strips together. So just trim it with about a quarter of an inch. And then we flip it over. And then you can see that's gonna lay completely flat when we sew this on. So then once you've done that, I'll just trim off this little here 
So once you've done that, then you go ahead and you sew the rest of the um, binding strip on. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Just put this back under the machine. Sew this on to finish it off. Just to the edge here. So so that's all there is to it you can um, a bit of a back stitch there and that's it that's adding your binding so once you've um, finished all of that um, the only other thing left to do is to pull it around to the back and then do a slip stitch so you can see and I'll try and get it under the camera here all we need to do is to pull this over to the back now you can pin this if you like. We just pin this in place like this. And go along and do, do the whole quilt. Just pinning it in place like this. And then you can see, we do the corners. Very simple, it's just like putting together a um, present I guess and then we can just pin that in place like this if you can see that let's pin it in like this and then we're just going to do a slip stitch and um, finish it off and that's it and that's your quilt completely finished so um, I think that covers everything I know it's been a long tutorial um, and I was trying to get everything in just for the beginners and make sure that you got all the right information. So thank you again for watching. And if you've got any questions, please email me. Any of the um, products that I've talked about, I've put links below um, in the uh, video tutorial so you can um, click on those if you need more information. But thank you again. And um, I'm looking forward to making some more tutorials for you. Um, but until then, Happy quilting.